Hi, Joseph. Hey, good morning. How are you? A couple of Joes talking for sure. Yes. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, man. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Thank you for reaching out. Oh, absolutely, man. So before we get into your life, what I would like to know is we've just survived a pandemic. The last three years has worked on all of us in its own way. How did you survive it? And how has it changed the way that not only you live your life, but the way that you conduct business now? Um, I think it is the single biggest catalyst to the the, the way I do business today. Um, and it actually, um, so in the middle of the pandemic, uh, actually right before the pandemic happened, uh, my wife and I were living in Florida for about seven years. And we had made the decision that we were going to relocate back to Pennsylvania, where I'm currently located. And I interviewed for a, a role. I got a, a job in Pennsylvania. Uh, so that was January of 2020. Uh, and we were starting the whole process. We were selling our house in, in Florida. We located a house up here in Pennsylvania. And then we uh, we made the decision to, to relocate. As we were making the, the move back, uh, we got back, I think we moved in like February 27th or something like that, 2020. Uh, about two weeks later, the, the pandemic hit and everything shut down. Um, and the, the company I was working for at the time was a technology company. And their customers were incredibly impacted. Uh, and we went through a number of different reductions and trying to you know, cut expenses because no one really knew how long it was going to last. And I think that was probably the biggest, the biggest challenge initially was we don't know what we don't know. Um, and we don't know how to get through this because we don't know what we're planning for. Um, and it was in August of 2020 where, uh, when I finally got caught up in a layoff and um, took a couple weeks to do some stuff around the house, uh, annoy the heck out of my wife and uh, get into a position where I was like, I don't know what I really want to do at this point. Uh, the whole reason for me moving back was, was kind of evaporated into thin, thin air. Um, and I contacted a good friend of mine uh, who owned a real estate brokerage. And I said, look, I don't, I don't know anything about real estate other than I've sold, bought and sold a couple houses, rented a house here and there. Um, but love to love to help you out if I could, because I do have other skill sets from being in, in business and in sales and sales leadership. And uh, he brought me on as a consultant for about three weeks, uh, where we just kind of unpacked a lot of the, the challenges that he was having within his business and started to align and, and define like what processes needed to be in place so that he could he could actually move forward uh, because he was going through the pandemic with his company as well. And about three weeks later, he said, this is silly. He's like, uh, you've already identified exactly some of the things that I needed to hear and, and needed to work through and I don't know how to do it. Um, he's like, if, it's, if, if you do, he's like, I'd love you for you to come on board uh, and be part of the team. So that was uh, in October of 2020. Um, I'm still there, uh, director of operations for a property management company. And in 2021, uh, my business partner and I decided to purchase a Remax franchise for the transactional side of our business. So we operate both businesses out of the same building. Um, and that's really just, that that's given us a, a much clearer picture that we, one, we can do things a little bit unorthodox if need be, because we can, we know how to adapt and, and uh, change course as necessary. But at the same time, there's uh, there's a lot of good in being lean in the business uh, and being agile enough to make sure that you're 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 able to do that. So uh, it's probably changed our hiring practices probably a lot more than anything else uh, because one, the labor market is not what it used to be, uh, and two. Uh, you have to make sure that the people that you're bringing on board share the same values and they understand what it could be like to be uncomfortable. And that's okay as long as you can figure out a, a path forward. You know, it's interesting. I moved, I got married in July of 2019, moved in January 2020, literally <laughs> got in the house. And then it's like, and we, we moved to Lee Summit here in Kansas City, okay. which is a pretty bustling area. Um, for those out there that, that are wondering what the claim to fame might be, Pat Metheny's from there. Okay. And literally the world shut down. But I do remember that our realtor, which is funny, this whole full circle thing here, realtors, you there's such a special relationship. It is I, I've had I've bought two houses and both the realtors have been lifelong friends. And it's crazy 
how in sales that has to be in my life. That's one of the strongest bonds. Like I remember car salesmen and there's other people here and there, but people that you buy homes from, that's a forever kind of thing as far as I'm concerned. It definitely can be. Uh, and you know, there's, there's, there's two, two sides of the coin, right? Because some there's the cautionary tale of realtors uh -huh. and then there's the, what you're talking about, which is that really strong bond. And uh, what we've found is combining the property management with the sales transactions, even though the businesses are separate, they're so interconnected in this in the same field and they feed each other, but it actually improves and increases that bond that you're talking about because what what happens is people buy their houses from a realtor and then they want to do other things. So maybe they get a transfer for work or you know military orders take them elsewhere or they decide to just move and they're growing their family, but they don't want to get rid of their house. Um, and then that that's where our property management company can come in and take care of that. So we still have this relationship moving forward. And we have numerous owners that have bought and sold several houses with us um, and continue to have us manage it because they're looking at it as an investment. And that would not be possible if the relationship wasn't good. You know, I typically ask if I was to put you in front of a bunch of grade school kids, third graders, and they would ask you, what do you do for a living? But I think we have a good idea. <laughs> what I want to know is, I'm going to take you back to the third grade. What was your dream? What did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I wanted to be an attorney. Um, and and then I became an adult and had to deal with attorneys. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard pass on my part. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't really recall ever having that kind of that dream job. Um, I've often joked about wanting to be an astronaut, uh, and I'm just barely tall enough, but I don't have the education to to do it. So that's kind of out the window. Um, so I think I'm doing what I like most, which is 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 working with salespeople, honestly. I mean, they're the most frustrating, uh, ignorant, challenging people to work with, but it's also, the most rewarding when you when you can work with them and you see them develop and you see them reach a level of success that they didn't think possible on their own um and it's it's, it's very rewarding on, on my end so you're also an athlete an endurance athlete you you've been doing it for 20 years huh yes yes sir okay so long distance running long distance running i've done several ironman uh distance races i've done a bunch of ultra marathons shorter distance races here and there, um, but it's it's been a, an interesting journey. I've met a lot of very great people uh, doing that type of thing because it's, it's interesting when you when you do those types of events. You're you're with a bunch of strangers that you've probably never met before, uh -huh. uh, but you're all competing for the the same goal. Um, but it's at different levels. You know, we're, yeah. I'm not a professional, and and most of the people that I, I race against are not professionals either. So they're kind of the weekend warriors. So it's not like there's no money on the line. <laughs> right, right. Which is, which is, uh, and it's not our profession, but at the same time, we're, we're, it's us versus the clock. It's us versus um, ourselves, essentially. And you, you, you work with each other and you kind of cooperate with each other. So somebody who's technically competing against you, if you see them like trip or they, they run out of uh, fluids or something like that, you're going to help them just because you, you, you could be in that position one mile down the road. Yeah. Uh, and you want somebody to help you out. So it's, Definitely a, a level of camaraderie that doesn't exist in in other types of things, uh, at least not in my life. You know, I was a cross country runner in high school. It was the only thing I could do. I was four eleven, so I couldn't. <laughs> I I just th that was it. But I always wondered. You know, I'm a fifty year old man now. I always wondered why did I pick that. And I think now that I look back on it, it was one of the only things that I could do, and I did do well at it as I got older. But also. Now that I think about how biology and the mind works, it gives your endorphins and endurance a level of being able to maintain and fight through things in life. I think that's kind of the big giveaway. And that's nothing that money would ever buy for you. That's like anything else. There's something in the wisdom that we gain as people that we realize later on is that you can really overcome. Your mind is the thing that you have to train. 
you 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 hit it spot on. And I actually uh, the the book that I just recently published, one of the chapters is is specifically on that. And it's you know we go through different uh, events throughout our life uh, that teach us how to overcome challenges and conflict and uh, obstacles. And it's the people who have willingly put themselves in that position that tend to have a better opportunity to get beyond challenges, resolve conflict, whether it's interpersonal or whatever, because their their mind is rewired. So they're not spending so much time trying to figure out why they're in that position. They're already thinking two and three steps ahead. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you think about, uh, uh, and I, j- I literally just had an interview this morning with a, with a potential uh, employee, and we were talking about how specifically building a real estate business is about discipline and doing the right things over and over and over again and not expecting immediate results. Um, it, which is very similar to going to the gym. The first time you go to the gym and lift a, a couple of weights, you don't expect to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. But it's that delayed gratification and that over time progression yep. because you're doing the same things and the right actions over and over again that gives you that that longer term uh, ability to to overcome and to you know build a, a base and then you start to you start to get stronger over time. Um, but you know that it's going to take time. And I think that's yeah. the that's the key is, is most people are, we live in a day and age where everybody is instant gratification oh, yeah. in every every way. From text messages, it used to be a send a letter. Now yeah. it's now it's pick up the phone or, or send a text message or an instant message or whatever the case is. And that has really regressed our minds uh, as individuals. So we have to we have to figure out how do we, how do we flip that to the way it used to be, uh, which is more natural, but also gives us the ability to get beyond challenges and, and and to find our path. So speaking of finding your path, who's been a hero for you or a role model in your life? Ooh, I've had quite a few, honestly. Um, my my dad uh, was was definitely one of my my bigger role models and someone that I always aspired to. Uh, he and I would always sit down and, and talk and strategize about business. And generally when I was frustrated or I was completely uh, in, in a moment where I needed to, to vent, um, I also had uh, one of my previous bosses was, he's still a good friend of mine and was someone who always helped guide, but not hold my hand. So he let me, he let me step in it sometimes and, and then figure out a way to get out of it but he was it was always very much a i would say more of a fatherly type of, of approach that he took um and it, he's just he was phenomenal for me and uh he's always he's done great things for for himself um but also for the, every business that he operates in is is very selfless the way he gives of his time and energy um and experience it to, to help others who want to help themselves for sure so if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now, who would it be? Who would you love to talk to? Uh, I would probably, that's a great question. Um, they have to be alive? No, well, let's open it up. Oh, if, if it's anybody throughout history, I would probably say Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Um, he was incredibly thoughtful and, and most people don't realize how introverted he was, um, but he had this, unique strategic brain that could kind of work through challenges from, from a different perspective. Um, but he was so introverted and 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 almost troubled uh, to that point where he, where it was difficult for him to always communicate where he was. And I, I've read tons of books about him. Uh, I'm actually working through one right now about his assassination. And it's just uh, he strikes me as the type of person who, genuinely cared about humanity mm-hmm. and and understood that he was a part of the story but it wasn't about him uh, in any way and and even though he was so introverted which I'm I'm actually very much an introvert I get exhausted being <laughs> in in front of people though that's my job is to be in front of people yeah. um so I I think I've related to him a lot so I he's someone who I would love to just like have have a cold beer with one day and just be like, 
Yeah. Tell me, tell me the secrets of the universe, man. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That would be a great conversation. So, in my poll of people that I asked that question to, number one for those that aren't here is probably Lincoln, and for those that that are alive, it's usually Mich Michelle Obama. Just for context of what yeah, people use. Interesting. Think. Yeah. So, yeah. um. What is it every day we wake up, alarm clock goes off, we hop out of bed, we go and do our thing. There's motivators that send us through our days. What is that for you? What's the ultimate motivator for you in your life? Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, I think it's the end result that I know is, is going, going to happen. Um, and as we've built our businesses over the last couple of years, that has really like, that's been my sort of my long distance goal, which is how do we scale our business to, to a level that, and I joke with my business partner, I, I always say, Hey, I will gladly sell our business tomorrow for $2 billion. Like if someone comes in, they want to offer that, that kind of money. It's not worth anywhere near that, Jeff. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's kind of the way my brain works is what what is possible with this? And the only thing that is possible with what we're trying to accomplish is in order to achieve that, you have you have to get out of bed every day. You have to attack the day the same way. And how do I stack a couple wins first thing in every area of my life? So the first thing that I do, I, my morning routine is is very, it's still evolving, but it's it's very structured. Um, I'm a, I'm up out of bed usually before five. Uh, drink water first thing, and then I usually meditate, make some tea, uh, and then I I work out, and it's about me. So I'll, I'll I spend some time journaling um, after my workout, get showered, get changed, and then I sit in front of my my computer and start to map out my day and plan out like what are the big rocks for the day that I need to accomplish in order to be successful. And as I as I go through those each of those steps and complete the things that I've committed to the day before, that's a win. Um, and I just keep wins being stacked. Eventually, by by lunchtime, I feel like, man, I've had a productive day. And if I had a productive day, then it's like, okay, let's wash, rinse, repeat for for the afternoon. Um, and getting out of bed every single day, I'm looking to st start stacking wins first thing. So like, what, what can I do that I can, I can check off my list and say, I, I won. So let's keep the whole metaphor of running in here. It's the idea of endurance. And because of that, we gain wisdom as we get older. Let's say you have in a theory. dream. <laughs> yeah, in theory, right. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 20-year-old version of yourself. You mm -hmm. could give that younger version of you a piece of advice based on what you've learned in your life. What would you tell that young version of you? Uh, don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Um, and if you wake up every day and you can you can act as a, in a way that will prove your critics wrong, you're you're gonna have a great career. You're gonna have a great life because you're we're we're so accustomed to listening to other people for advice. And, and unfortunately, what they usually give us is detrimental to our progress. And that's what we we pick up and we put in the back of our brain. You're not tall enough. You're not fast enough. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. But you don't have enough money. You don't have enough experience. You don't have all these things that you're not good enough in. And that's what most people internalize. So if you if you start your day trying to think of how do I take all that negative inner self critic type talk and push it off to the side and say, I'm going to do the opposite of that. I'm going to do exactly what I've been told I can't do. Um, you become unstoppable because yeah. uh, eventually you're going to start just checking those things off. Like it's not going to matter. Um, those those self-limiting type beliefs and the, the, the things that get instilled in people's brains from early on just become irrelevant. They're, they never go away. You can't get rid of them. Uh, but there's a way to silence them in a, in a way that's very positive because you're you're being successful and the success outweighs the negative. So let's dig into that success. What's been your best success story, best fan letter, anything from the work that you've done that really stands out? Um, 
I, I think I would say probably my previous previous roles. Um, I worked for Staples on the contract and commercial side for about ten years, and my my best success was uh, I I was a what they call sales excellence, which is essentially their president's club. Uh, I was a sales excellence winner three times uh, in in about ten years, which is which is pretty good. <laughs> uh, because once you when you move into a different role, you're not eligible that year. Um, so as I as I was promoted, if I took out the promotion years, I was I was about seventy five percent successful of getting to sales excellence every year. Um, and that was usually a trip to Mexico, uh, which my wife and I would go to Mexico and uh, fell in love with Cabo San Lucas as a result. Um, so that to me was kind of like the the highlight of my career was being able to go there and you know. I've achieved a level of success, not just because of what I was doing, but because I had a really strong team that was that was performing for me um, as a result of things that I had done, but also helped them with. So, Joseph, everyone out there has an idea of who they think you are. There's all these pockets and bubbles of people, family, friends, colleagues, clients, but ultimately you are in control. You live your life. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Uh. I like to consider myself to be somewhat of a renaissance man, uh, where I'm not just focused on one thing. I'm I'm okay at everything. Uh, you know, I I can garden, I can run, uh, I can run a business, I can coach people, uh, I can cook, uh, I can uh, travel well. Uh, you know, I can decorate, I can paint, I can I can do a little bit of everything. And I like to think of myself as someone who's more well-rounded. Than, than others, uh, where most people, they, they pigeonhole themselves and they become this corporate uh, entity, if you will, where their, their identity is tied to their just their job, um, as opposed to anything that they do outside of a job. Uh, my wife and I don't have any kids or anything, but uh, you know, we, we do rescue cats. Um, we, we actually take care of a, a number of strays as well. So, I think that makes a well-rounded person. I, I like to think of myself as someone who's better well-rounded than others. So if anyone out there wants to learn more about you, find out anything, hire you, anything pertaining to your world, where can they go on the web? Uh, best spot is probably LinkedIn. Um, that's where I, I do most of my, I, I've started writing articles uh, several times a week and put them on there. Um, generally about something that's happening in my personal professional life. Uh, that per, that other people could potentially benefit from, uh, and that's that's probably the best place to to find out. Okay, this is this is a, a more interesting individual. I'd like to talk to them. Right on, Joseph. Hey, man, this has been great. Thank you for opening up. Thanks for your story. Best of luck with everything. I got to tell you, I had to hang up the shoes. I have to bike now. I had shin splints really bad, uh, so I'm still out running whatever's chasing me, but I'm doing it in a different way. <laughs> Uh, if if you if you have shin splints, one one thing that has worked for many people over the years is throughout the day walk around the house pigeon toed and then penguin toed, um, uh -huh. because what it does is actually changes the ligaments a little bit and strengthens those ancillary muscles, so you you don't have quite as much stress on the that same area where where it's actually pulling against the bone. Interesting. That's great to know, man. Yeah, yeah. learn Works something good. interesting and new every day, man. So, Absolutely. Cool. Well, hey, man, it's great to meet you. Great to get to know you. Before we hop off here, how do you pronounce your last name? Clea. Okay. I just want to make sure for anybody out there that's spelling it and for pronunciation, we got it. So, Joseph, thank you again, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. Nice to meet you. Take care. Hey, have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye.